Good morning. What a good afternoon. Good morning and good afternoon. What a blessed, lovely day here at Chestnut Hill College. Will the 2023 commencement of the School of Graduate Studies at Chestnut Hill College please come to order? Good afternoon and welcome to Chestnut Hill College. We also welcome families and friends who are joining us locally, nationally, and globally via live streaming. Our procession was led by the American state and papal flags representing Chestnut Hill College's global diversity where the flags of Jamaica, the Philippines, Spain, and Taiwan. The flag bearers are graduating international students. We come together today to recognize the accomplishments of the School of Graduate Studies Class of 2023 and to award the degrees they have earned through their diligence and commitment to academic endeavors in the midst of great challenges and trials. Both we and they have reason to be proud on this day of great celebration. The invocation will be delivered by Warren Ross, MS, Class of 2022, and Anna Ryan Bender, the Director of Campus Ministry, will lead us in the singing of the National Anthem. Please remain standing for the invocation and the National Anthem. May we bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we humbly give thanks to you for bringing us to this point in our education and our careers. We give you thanks in believing in your word from Matthew chapter seven, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Thank you for the gift of faith and the opportunity to be a part of this commencement. To be here means you allowed us to start a path you laid out during a period where the future became for many in this world that indesirable, I mean that indescribable, indescribable, undesirable gray area. During this time, you gave us strength we needed to grow and persevere and succeed. Lord, now that we're here, now that we're here, you have shown us what knocking at the door can do. Stir up the unifying mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph within us so that we can knock at the door for others, like our family and friends and those who have passed on have done for us. Lord, we know now that it is time for our lights to shine, as Matthew chapter five encourages us to. Let our lights so shine before others that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Lord, let our lights touch individuals who do not think it was possible to achieve their dreams. To the child that walks with his mother with a yellow wagon to get books from the library, to every person in this space who has ever doubted their ability to succeed. Lord, cover this world and our communities with love and peace. Encourage us to continue knocking at the door and believing that doors shall be open. Amen. 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 say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming on the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? 
I am so pleased to introduce Catherine Lockyer Multan, BA 92, MS 22, Chestnut Hill College, Chair of the Board of Directors, to offer a greeting. Good afternoon. President Latimer, Sisters of St. Joseph, Board of Directors, Administration, Faculty, Staff, Volunteers, Family, Friends, and yes, the graduates of the School of Graduate Studies Class of 2023. It is a great joy to welcome all of you here to commencement on this day. We are thrilled to have you all here in celebration for those who have attained their degrees. Further, we honor all of those who make up the support network for our graduates. You are all very welcome here as part of our Chestnut Hill College family. Throughout your academic journey, you have faced important challenges, new obstacles that became opportunities. Every one of us who works on behalf of Chestnut Hill College knows that you juggled many responsibilities in addition to the one of being a student. We honor your commitment and your persistence throughout your journey. In our home, we, we remind one another to have an attitude of gratitude to recognize that none of us goes along the path by ourselves. We are all lifted up by some very special people who provide a steady hand, a gentle nudge, or even a strong word when needed. You are all stronger for the love and support you have offered one another. Remember to thank those special people for their support along the way. Tomorrow, someone will look to you for that same leadership and support. There is little doubt that you will respond in the tradition of the Sisters of St. Joseph by helping your dear neighbor when called upon. God bless you and enjoy your celebration. I am pleased to introduce Rachel Annunziata, MS Class of 2022, who will offer a welcome on behalf of the graduates. Good afternoon to the faculty, staff, administration, congregation, board of directors, and our president, Dr. William Latimer. And to my peers and our friends and family, welcome to graduation of 2023. I'm beyond blessed to be here today, and I am forever grateful to God for guiding me to Chestnut Hill College six years ago I never would have imagined that I would be receiving my master's degree, never mind delivering a commencement speech. From the age of 13, I found substances as a means of coping, and much of my life was spent in and out of psychiatric hospitals, detox centers, and rehabs. I had no aspirations for myself and believed I had no potential to become anything worth living for. There was a time I thought I would never live to see my 30th birthday. But by the grace of God, I found recovery and went back to school with a mustard seed of hope and determination. <laughs> From the moment I researched the psychology program here at Chestnut Hill College, I knew this was it. I knew this would be the place I would learn how to fulfill my purpose as a clinician. As, a stu as students of CHC, we've been taught the material needed to grow in our professions, but we have also had lessons of compassion and empathy. Sister Maria koska Logue once told a group of students that Chestnut Hill will prepare you to learn how to earn a living because you must, but you are here to learn how to live, and that is exactly what I have gained from my time here. CHC provided me with the knowledge and experiences needed to live in a way that allows me to give back to my community and help others who are struggling with adversity. I'm so proud to call CHC my alma mater and believe I would not be the person I am today, both personally and professionally, without this program. To all my professors, 
Your knowledge, passion, and encouragement has helped to lead me to my higher purpose. I would also like to thank my friends and family for never giving up on me, especially when I was at rock bottom. To my fellow graduates, this has not been an easy road by any means. We had to learn to balance not only classes and internships, but work and our personal life as well. As Griffins, no matter your background, life experiences, or degree, our strength lies in our grit and passion to better ourselves and the lives of others. We are the light that others may need to find their way. And I am confident in our ability to bring all that we have gained from our time here at CHC into our communities to make, help make this world a better place, not only for our generations, but for those to come. Psalms 128.2 says, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor, how joyful and prosperous you will be. And today, we celebrate the fruit of our labor. Thank you and congratulations, Griffins Forever! Thank you so much for those lovely words. I'd now like to welcome Professor Claudia Garcia Leeds, co-director of the Clinical and Counseling Psychology Program, who will introduce Rabbi Linda Joy Holtzman, who will deliver the commencement address. <coughs> Believe it or not, I just got a cough. <laughs> the worst, worst timing. But uh, something that I didn't expect um, when I practiced my introduction to Rabbi Linda was how much emotion and pride I feel being surrounded by, by people that I see every day, I teach. Um, I'm so touched. Um, this is wonderful. You, you should be proud of yourselves. Um, I'm the co-director of a master's in clinical and counseling program and I'm delighted to introduce Rabbi Linda Holtzman, known by many simply as Rabbi Linda. A native Philadelphian, Rabbi Linda was ordained by the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College in 1979. She is the rabbi of Tikkun Olam Havura and the director of student life of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College. I met Rabbi Linda 17 years ago. My, my husband, who was raised in a secular Jewish family, and I joined Mishkan Shalom Synagogue after our six-year-old son, Gabriel, expressed his interest in studying Judaism and becoming a bar mitzvah. I knew very little about the bar mitzvah process as Gabriel approached his 13th birthday, Rabbi Linda was a constant source of guidance and support and helped us prepare for the big day. All the preparation culminated in one of the most beautiful spiritual experiences that my side of the family had participated in since our arrival to the U.S. At the bar mitzvah service, which Rabbi Linda officiated, Everyone in attendance, from our Catholic family to my husband's Jewish family to our friends of different faiths, became one spiritual family. The joy of appreciation for each other was palpable. Rabbi Linda made that possible. Through her ability to bring people together and to tap into a sense of spirituality that's common to all of us, in addition to serving as rabbi of Mishkan Shalom, Rabbi Linda has, over the years, served as the rabbi of Beth Israel. 
a conservative congregation in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and as a part-time rabbi of Beth Ahava, which was the first LBGTQ plus congregation in Philadelphia. She also spent many years as a social professor and director of, of practical rabbinics at the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College and is the founder and organizer of the Reconstructure Hevra Kadisha of Philadelphia. Rabbi Linda has also served on the board of Philadelphia New Sanctuary Movement and on the National Board of Jewish Voice for Peace. Currently, Rabbi Linda is a member of POWER, an interfaith organization committed to building communities of opportunity that work for all and serves on the Mayor's Commission of Faith-Based and Interfaith Affairs in Philadelphia. She also has served on the board of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical Association. And this is just a few of her many accomplishments. Rabbi Linda has demonstrated throughout her life that the values we carry are central to the work that we do. As our graduates envision their work ahead, it is essential that they and all of us feel empowered to do what the Sisters of St. Joseph and Rabbi Linda have always done, care for our dear neighbors. It is my great pleasure to welcome Rabbi Linda to Chestnut Hill College. Oh, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> so first, it is such a pleasure to be here. And uh, graduates, like just congratulations, congratulations. It's wonderful to celebrate with all of you. I learned when I walked in today something about the Chestnut Hill College community. I walked in completely lost and said, where's the rotunda? <laughs> I, I, I found two students who just immediately said, oh, we'll show you, and walked me all the way to the rotunda. That doesn't happen everywhere. So thank you, Chestnut Hill College, for being so warm and so welcoming. Just a pleasure. One of my favorite legends in Jewish tradition comes out of a very important moment in our history. According to the Hebrew Bible, the Israelites were slaves in ancient Egypt for 400 years. When they're finally close to escaping, they reach the shores of the Red Sea and look out at the sea, and the sea looks like an insurmountable barrier for them. They can't cross it. How will they ever reach a place where they can live fully and well? Where can they learn what they need to have to live the lives they want? and have the opportunities that they crave. It doesn't give us any details in the Hebrew Bible about what happens at that shore. But there's another category of literature that I want to tell you about, which is called Midrash. Midrash steps in. And Midrash does what many of you will do if you are in counseling or psychology, looks at a given moment and says, hmm, what am I not hearing at this moment? What's behind this experience? It's when you say to your clients, so tell me more about that. Midrash asks, what made the Red Sea part? So the story, as they stood looking over the raging sea, feeling as if this is all impossible, Moses tried everything he possibly knew how to do. He lifted his staff up to God, and nothing happened. He called out to God, begging God to save them from more years of slavery, but nothing happened. Then, one man, a man named Nachshon ben Aminadav, looked around, stared at the sea, and knew exactly what needed to be done. 
he lifted his foot and he stepped into the sea. And then another foot, and then another step, and then another step until he was just about up to his nose in the water when suddenly the sea parted. And the rest was history. I've always loved that Midrash, that legend. I've always seen it as the ultimate tale, demanding that if we want to change the world, we need to act. We can't sit back and assume that God will do the work that's needed if we do nothing. We can't sit back and assume that the world will change if we just sit back and watch. And I think that that is one clear message of this tale. But there's something more. I always saw this as a story for people who were in extreme spot, who were the person who actively jumps in to, re to uh, resist a mass shooter and saves the lives of the people in the room, or a person who rushes in to save someone from a burning building and manages to save their life, or somebody who stands in the face of equipment to stop the building of an oil pipeline risking being overrun by the equipment. I still believe that that story is for those crucial moments. Where do we find the courage at times of extreme danger? But now, I see it as much more. As Claudia said, when I became a rabbi, it was 1979, which is probably way before many who are graduating today were born. <laughs> it was a very different time in many ways. In the Jewish community, women rabbis were a new phenomenon. And I wasn't just a woman, I was a lesbian, and I was just figuring out what that meant for me. There were no out LGBTQ rabbis. And I wasn't sure I could ever have a future in the rabbinate if I did come out. I served as a rabbi in a conservative synagogue. And as the first woman to be the sole rabbi in a congregation, I got a lot of press. Coming out took me six years in the rabbinate until my partner and I decided that we were going to have children until we knew that no child of ours was going to ever think that their family needed to hide, that no family of theirs was anything other than something to be proud of. That realization was for me a Nachshon moment, Nachshon, that man in the sea. It was clear. And through the years, I've had more Nachshon moments. Sometimes it's just talking about Palestinian rights in a less than accepting Jewish community. Sometimes it's risking arrest at the building of the pipeline on indigenous lands in North Dakota. These have been significant Nachshon moments for me. But it's more than that. Every one of us is Nachshon every day. Every morning we look in the mirror and we decide what we can tackle that day. Every relationship we struggle with that needs work, every job we can't decide if we have the ability to apply for it, whatever we are facing, when we get that message, yup, do it, we are Nachshon. We're stepping into the sea and it's raging before us blocking our view of what's yet to come. That's the tricky part. We know what has led to that moment, but none of us knows what will be in the future. Today, this moment of your graduation is the ultimate Nachshon moment. You have all accomplished something grand whether your degree is in counseling or psychology or education or human services or organizational leadership or cybersecurity or digital communication, whatever you have studied, you stood at the sea once before 
when you decided to step in and risk engaging in the deep learning that you have done, learning that can make a difference. And in my mind, one of the most important things that anyone can do is risking learning. It's huge. That was a big Nachshon moment. And now, and now you face another C. Our world, in so many ways, is broken. The gun violence in this city alone demands our attention. The climate is growing more and more and more desperate every day. We face racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, homophobia, transphobia every day. They're overwhelming. Today, you are all standing at the sea because you can make a difference. You can find the courage to step up and face the challenges that the world is presenting. So how to do it? How do you embody your inner Nachshon? What is it that moves you at this moment? What is it that gives all of us the courage to step up to the unknown, even if the waters are frightening? The truth about the story? We have no idea what makes Nachshon take that step. We only know that he did. So to figure it out, we need to add Midrash to the Midrash. It may be that he was pushed by another Israelite standing behind him, and that's how he ended up in the sea. It may be that deep within him, he felt a voice telling him to go and make a difference. It may be that he felt a call from a force beyond himself, telling him that he had to answer that call. There's no way to know what moved him, only that he was moved. As you sit here, you might look behind at the time in school and remember a mentor, a teacher, someone who spoke not only to your mind, but to your heart. It may be someone who taught you in one class that just moved you, or an advisor who was there for you, or someone who went the extra mile to learn. That can be the push. Their message can be the push to bring you into the future as Nachshon to make a difference in the world. But I can't do it all, you might be saying. Absolutely not. No one can. In Pirkei Avod, in a Jewish text called Ethics of the Fathers, we read, you do not need to complete the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. This is a time for you to jump into the work that you've now learned to do because it's work that can heal the world, even if you can't do it all. No one person can do it all. By taking that push from the teacher, the mentor, get there, jump into the sea. Or maybe for you, it's following your inner self. The power of your own vision, your desire to make a difference, that is a powerful way to move ahead. I like to imagine Nachshon looking out at the sea and suddenly seeing, seeing, ah, oh, we have to have freedom. We can't go back to slavery that we experienced. Our past has been terrible and we never even fully knew just what it was. And now that Nachshon saw it, he couldn't stop seeing it. Once you see the world you live in, once you really open your eyes to it, you can never unsee it. Several months ago, my neighbor's son was shot and killed while attending a party. 
Every time I walk past my neighbor's house in my mind's eye, I see his son. I can never unsee him. But I can let that image that's now embedded so deeply within me move me to work to stop gun violence in Philadelphia. I can do it in small ways. I can, and you should, vote. <laughs> vote soon for candidates who we believe will really try to end violence and maybe succeed on May 17th. This is a plug. Vote on May 16th, 16th I'm sorry. Or in larger ways, you might want to go to rallies or marches, support organizations that are trying to end gun violence. Whatever your inner nachshon tells you to do, do it. Or maybe a call from a force that's greater than you. That too can move us to act, to step up. I don't believe in a God that sits out of the world and looks down on us controlling our lives. My vision of God is a force that is within us and around us, a force that unites us and makes us all one a force that pushes us to act for justice. As you sit here today, you can feel that force that unites this community of students and teachers and family and friends and supporters that unites us all. You could feel the force that moves you to step up to be all that you are capable of being. You could feel that force saying, go. Make a difference in the world. Whatever your vision of God is, if you have a vision, it doesn't matter. But if for you, responding to the divinity that you experience is the way to move ahead and change the world you live in, be a nachshon. Step into the water. Whatever moved nachshon to step into the sea, whether he was pushed or had a personal vision or felt a call from above, my guess is that no one was more surprised than he. When he saw himself, a random Israelite, not Moses or Aaron or Miriam or a great leader, take the step that changed all of history. Your own steps may not be huge, but like Nachshon, once you take those steps, you never know. I hope that on this day, as we all celebrate you, that you are beginning to imagine the next vital steps that you will take. My fervent hope is that your steps will change the world. Thank you so much, Rabbi Linda, for those inspiring and challenging words. We are honored to have you with us today. It is now my privilege to present the President's Award for Mission and Values. Jacqueline Noons, Chief Officer of Mission and Ministry, will describe the medal and announce the candidate who will be receiving the award. A commemorative medal specially designed for this award represents the charism and spirituality of the Sisters of St. Joseph and the mission of the college through such mission-centric themes as unity, love without distinction, advocacy for social justice, diversity and inclusion, high ethical integrity, academic excellence, and serving the dear neighbor. The class of 2023 recipient of the Mission and Values Award was chosen by all full-time faculty within the School of Graduate Studies. Deanna De Haas is our unanimous choice for this mission-centered award. <clears throat> Deanna, you have brought a positive spirit to the classroom, constantly energized and engaged. Your professors have said she possesses grit, unafraid to push herself beyond her comfort zone to learn and to grow. Integrity, authenticity, 
cultural awareness and humility, a collaborative spirit, and wisdom beyond her years are qualities that enhance everything Deanna does. Deanna's caring nature and passionate advocacy for others is paramount to who she is as a person. Deanna has a history of commitment and dedicated service to others, even in the face of adversity. Her tenacity on behalf of the many marginalized communities she serves and her fervent belief in their right to be treated with dignity, respect, and humanity have earned Deanna the title social justice warrior. Deanna's clinical supervisor, Dr. Vidal stated, Deanna exemplifies all of the qualities of this medal. Her contribution to the field of psychology through selfless service to the underserved has made a profound impact at AIDS Care Group a nonprofit focused on serving diverse populations living with HIV, addiction, trauma, and homelessness. Deanna's dedication to her patients and colleagues is inspiring to all who have the privilege to know her. And faculty member Dr. Browning stated, some people need champions. Deanna is consistently that champion for people she serves. Through this nomination, Deanna is our champion, and we are honored to present her recognition of this mission-driven life and work. I'm honored and humbled to present Deanna De Haas as the recipient of the 2023 Chestnut Hill College Award for Mission and Values. Congratulations, Deanna. With pride and admiration, we salute you for your commitment to the charism and spirituality of the Sisters of St. Joseph and the mission of the college, the ways in which you serve the community and all the good work that you do. May you continue to use your God-given gifts for the good of others and the benefit of society. Now, for the long-anticipated moment, the conferral of degrees on the class of 2023. Mark Meacham, Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty of Chestnut Hill College will present the candidates for master's degrees and the candidates for the Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology degree. School of Graduate Studies, Class of 2023. I know how hard you've worked to earn your place today. I am very proud of all that you've accomplished, and I ask that the candidates for the master's degrees please stand. President Latimer, the candidates for the degree of Master's of Science in Human Services Management, Master's of Science in Clinical and Counseling Psychology, Master of Science in Clinical Psychology, Master of Science in School Counseling, Master's of Science in Cybersecurity, Master's of Education, and Master's of Science in Organizational Leadership have completed the required courses of study at Chestnut Hill College and have complied faithfully with the standards of this institution. Therefore, as Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty of Chestnut Hill College, I have the honor to present them to you for master's degrees. By the authority vested in me as president of Chestnut Hill College, under her charter from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I confer upon you the degrees of Master of Science in Human Services Management, Master of Science in Clinical and Counseling Psychology, Master of Science in Clinical Psychology, Master of Science in School Counseling, Master of Science in Cyber Security, Master of Education, and Master of Science in Organizational Leadership, to which you are recommended. 
admitting you to all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto throughout the world, signed and sealed with the great seal and testimony whereof you will receive the diploma of the college. I would ask you please reserve applause until all master's candidates have received their diplomas so family and friends can hear the names of their loved ones. Master's candidates, please come forward. The Masters of Science in Human Service Management. Brian Berry. Danielle Brooks. Isaiah Devine Jr. Danielle Nicole Hackney. Marisol Miramontes. Christine Morris. Warren Lynn Ross. Michelle Simon. Amy L. Wheeler. Karima Chanel Williams. For the Masters of Science in Clinical and Counseling Psychology, Rachel Annunziata. Mary Magdalene Barr. Jonathan Benitez. Brianna Capiccioni. Gabriel Anthony Carrero. Taylor Francine Carter. Taylor's diploma will be presented by her mother, Francine Roseman, Assistant Director of Athletics. <laughs> Chelsea Rose Cowden. Layla Ariana Cruz. Nicholas Angelo Di Pasquale. Kathleen Renee Duner. Sarah Erb. Dominique Deshawn Kareem Evans. Aaron Fantasia Davis. Candice Girandola. Gina Brooks Hoffman. Ashley Danielle Holmes. Paul Thomas Inslee. Jill Mariah Isaacson. Ashley Johnson. Melanie Jane Johnson. Isabella Ulrika Jones. Sarah Kelly. Davia Kenton. Julia Rose Menino. Max Messino. Julie Catherine McGlynn. Diamond McNeil. <laughs> Luciana Mendoza Santina, Santiana. Paula J. Montour. Shane Christine Palmer. Erica A. Panella. Carolyn Elizabeth Pinto. Allison J. Rietta. Brett Robert Rosenblatt. 
Jesse Liam Ryan. Sylvia Rubio Serrano. Janelle Christine Sigley. Kristen Snyder. Daniel Joshua Spiritoso. Samantha C. Stevens. Caroline Rebecca Thomas. Shahira Womack Newman. Adam John Ziegler. Emily Michelle Zubriskie. For the Master of Science in Clinical Psychology. Zoe Allison Abrams. Leland Barclay. Amanda Duvalay. <laughs> Madeline Jane Herenza. Jalen Danelle Smith. Natalie Maria Weaver. For the Masters of Science in School Counseling. Ryan John Latanzi. For the Masters of Science in Cybersecurity, Christine Jackson. Ebony Janae Nichols. Jeffrey David, David Rabinovich. Monica Montes White. For the Masters of Education, Elizabeth A. Anastasio. Elizabeth Jean Anderson. Wayne R. Brinkley McDowell. Maria Christina Manganser Casas. Chantel Channer Nunez. Lisa Chodazek. Isabella Danella Mercanti. Ashley Diuni. Christina A. Dorman. Deanna Downey. Teresa Elizabeth Doyle. Yakisha Hepburn. Russell Peter Invernoso. Karen Marie Leary. Alina Lynn. Felicia L. Mack. Matthew Pena Manglonia. Peter Christopher McDonald. Shantae Nicole Murph. Shaniqua Pearsall. Medina Alida Rashid. Chantel Sharice Reed. Brittany Marie Richter. Paul Shin Lowy. Anna Simmons. Olivia Rose Siriani. Amber D. Snell. Gabriella Francesca Sorrentino. 
Julia Swanson, Diane Elizabeth Tishner, Catherine C. Toll, Minoshka Michelle Velez. Colette June Welsh. Rafiq Williams. For the Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership. Stephen Francisco Cedeno. Pilate Dikazi. William DeMeo, Jr. Madeline Ray Jimenez. Connor Matthew O'Donnell. James Ryder IV. William J. Schaefer. Gretchen Marie Tillett. K.C. Williams. And Thomas Peter Pitchley. Let's give a big round of applause to all of our master's students. I congratulate you, Masters of Science and Masters of Education. You may all be, be seated now. When their names are called, candidates for the Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology will come to the platform with their dissertation chairs or PsyD faculty members who will place the doctoral hoods on the candidates after the candidates have received their diploma. Their dissertation chairs and faculty members are Dr. Jade Logan, Dr. Scott Browning, Dr. Cheryl Rothery, Dr. Bindu Mathikalalam, Dr. Kevin McCarthy, Dr. Corey Jackson, and Dr. Rachel Sachs. Candidates for the degree of Doctor of Psychology and Clinical Psychology, please stand. Mr. President, the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Psychology and Clinical Psychology have completed the required courses of study at Chestnut Hill College and have complied faithfully with the standards of this institution. Therefore, as Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty at Chestnut Hill College, I have the honor to the degree of Doctor of Psychology and Clinical Psychology. By the authority vested in me as President of Chestnut Hill College, under the Charter from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Psychology in Clinical Psychology, to which you are recommended, admitting you to all the rights. Thank God. And this is why I have a camera guy and still record it. I respect them as well. Ashley M. de Blasi. <laughs> Deanna Louise de Haas.
Gwendolyn Mary Edwards. Safira A. Griffin. <laughs> Allison Lee Holiday. Erica Lynn Johnson. <laughs> Kara R. Manning. Maria Roberto Miller. <laughs> Gavin O'Malley. Benjamin Ogden Rogers. <laughs> Lauren Jill Soletsky. Victoria Rose Taggart. <laughs> it's official. We now have 12 New doctors in the house. Go ahead, stand up if you want to. Doctors of Psychology and Clinical Psychology in recognition of your newly conferred degrees, I invite you to sit behind the faculty and to follow them out during the recessional. Congratulations. And thanks so much for everyone's patience. As I look out on this crowd filled with so many graduates and families, I can't help but take a moment of personal reflection, as this is my first commencement ceremony as the president of Chestnut Hill College. 
As we join together in this time of celebration, I am reminded of why I cho chose to join Chestnut Hill College. This community built on the strong foundation of the charisms of the Sisters of St. Joseph lives its mission of service to the dear neighbor and the delivery of transformative, holistic educational experiences in a way that few other institutions can match. In our graduates, I see this commitment being carried forth beyond the campus and into communities around the world. We live in challenging times, and your college experience was impacted and shaped by the COVID pandemic. However, it is clear that those challenges did not stop you. Rather than retreating, you made the decision to stand tall and you have persevered. I am heartened knowing that our graduates leave here today with the tools and the personal fire to effect real and positive change. This commitment, thank you, thanks mom. Uh, this commitment to a more just world made possible through education and advocacy drives us all forward. I look to your eyes and I see inspiring leaders who have learned and grown and challenged themselves as CHC students. Graduates, you should all be proud of what you have accomplished in your time here. Just as so many of us here today, whether in person, watching online, or those of us that are with us in spirit are also proud of your extraordinary accomplishments. Your work is not done. This is not the end of a journey, but rather an entirely new beginning, a rebirth as a graduate of Chestnut Hill College. You are entrusted with a mission of service and compassion that you will carry forward, not just in your chosen careers, but throughout your lives. As faculty and staff, this is why we invest our professional energy and choose to work here. It is the same passion that has motivated the Sisters of St. Joseph from the very beginnings of Le Puy, France, and still today calls so many sisters to action on our campus and throughout our community. And so, on behalf of every member of the Chestnut Hill College community, I applaud your success and look forward with great anticipation to what lies ahead for each of you. Congratulations, and may God bless you all. To you. <laughs> Alumni Association President Christina Diaz, Class of 2015, and Jacqueline Nunes, Chief Officer for Mission and Ministry, will join me for the induction of the graduates as members of the Alumni Alumnae Association and for the missioning of the class of 2023. Welcome new alumni of Chestnut Hill College. It is my absolute honor to stand before an audience full of such pro promise and potential. As president of the Chestnut Hill College Alumni Association and proud member of the class of 2015, it is my privilege to confer on each of you graduates a lifetime membership into the Chestnut Hill College Alumni Association. I offer my congratulations to you and welcome you into this association. Today begins a next step in your already years-long relationship with Chestnut Hill College. The degree you receive today is your lifelong invitation to stay connected, to come back, to make that walk up the hill from the lower lot. I promise it actually gets nostalgic as you come back. <laughs> to enjoy a carol night, to mentor a future graduate in your field, to volunteer your time as an alumni ambassador, to share your ideas and all your accomplishments with us, and to meet and network with fellow alumni, no matter the graduation year or major. As you make these trips back to campus, you will notice, as we alumni all have, changes in growth to our college. In the almost 100 years as an institution, Chestnut Hill College has gone 
from a small women's college where alumna share stories about the dress codes and curfews they had, believe it or not, to a 75-acre co-educational campus with numerous bachelors, masters, and even a doctoral program. Just in my eight years as an alumna, there is now a new president, new fields of study being offered, a revised mission statement, and updates to the Clement Hall classrooms. Despite all the, ch all the changes we alumni have seen, there are two things that remain the same. One, the education we have received has been exceptional and has prepared us for the future and our changing world. The second is the college remains a supportive, loving community that produces lifelong friendships and memories that will stay with you forever. I encourage you all to cherish those friendships and keep those memories close because the most important things in life are the people we love and the experiences that make us who we are. I leave you all with a maxim from the college's foundresses, the Sisters of St. Joseph. The moments of your life are precious. Make the most of each one. So make the most of this moment today and celebrate with your loved ones. On behalf of all Chestnut Hill College alumni, we are so proud of you and we welcome you into our alumni family. Remember, once a griffin, always a griffin. <laughs>
for the alma mater and remain standing for the benediction. The alma mater will be led by Anna Ryan Bender, the Director of Campus Ministry, and the benediction will be offered by Yakisha Hepburn, Masters in Education, Class of 2022. Immediately following the benediction, the platform party and the graduates will leave the tent. Please remain in your places until the graduates have left the tent. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon us as we celebrate with our families on this grand milestone. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing of learning. Thank you for the privilege of studying in our chosen area and gaining new skills. Lord, I pray that we will be able to use our qualifications and knowledge to go out and bless the world. Support us as we teach, nurture, encourage, and be a listening ear. Help us slow down and be a presence that invites people to be open and authentic. As a popular Jamaican phrase will say, no way till drum beat before your granny acts. Let us prepare ourselves when moving forward to our goals. Order our steps, God. Help us be patient and discern when we are called. Foster within us a continued passion for learning and serving as we journey onwards. Loving God, companion us through all the moments of our lives, the both good and challenging. Be with us. May each of us today feel proud of who we have become and enjoy celebrating in our success. Let us ask for your blessing and love upon us, and we all say, Amen. Amen.